everyone. Welcome to Sonographers in the Cities. My name is Lynn. And I'm Giselle. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. And if you're new, welcome. We're happy to have you with us. Today we have a very special episode. If you guys haven't uh, seen my channel since the beginning, we have a special guest here, Leah. She is a sonographer out in Texas, and I did a whole video with her when she was a new grad, and here she is now. It's 2022, so this is technically almost two years later. Welcome, Leah. Hey, everybody. How are y'all? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. We're so excited to have you on on today's episode to just kind of catch us up on everything. Yeah, so since we last talked, I graduated school at the College of Healthcare Professions in December of 2020, and I accepted a job that was my clinical site right out of school. I was so excited. It was my dream job. I was working in OB-GYN. Uh, however, the exams were every 15 minutes. Uh, so we were doing anatomies in 15 minutes. We were doing some days twin anatomies in 15 minutes and um, new patients and just growths and everything. And it was just a very unsustainable, unsustainable type of job, especially for a new grad. So I've been thinking about finding a new job and um, BB Imaging. I don't know if y'all have heard about them. Um, BB Imaging reached out to me on Instagram and said they had an office in Texas and so I, uh, I left my first job and accepted my second job last year in July, which was a good transition to make, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, that's, uh, where you're that's at about, right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what where I'm at right now. It's good. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you on. I, I can't believe it's been that long since uh, we last talked. Lynn here, she's obviously, for those who are new to this podcast, uh, she's a student still and she's going to graduate this year. So she probably has some questions for Leah, but we definitely do talk about how it's important to make sure self-care is good. And I'm sure you can you post about it on your Instagram and just knowing all the things that you posted through your journey is, is really awesome. And we got to, we kind of got to see you grow through that. And Lynn's also doing the same exact thing. So um, it's definitely really cool to see where you're at now and where Lynn is also about to go. Yeah. It's crazy <laughs> having walked the journey and looking back and being able to help guide people through it, like being on the other end, it just blows my mind that, that now, you know, you can help other people through it. It's my, one of my favorite things. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to see. Uh, so I have a confession, not confession, secret. When I was looking into sonographies, you both were the first one that I looked at on Instagram because there Aww. was there wasn't a lot of resources anywhere. So um, Leah, I saw yours first actually, and I was like, ah, oh, she's so pretty, and she's in Texas. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to be like her. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're going to make me cry. That's so sweet. And then I was like, look at where we are now. Yeah. And, and following through your stories, like, I didn't know you had two jobs. And you're like, oh, you're a new grad and you had two jobs. And I was like, that's just like boggles my mind. I was like, how do you do it? So um, my question for you, since like you and Giselle caught up, you told us about where you are, your point in your life right now. Um, let's uh, take backtrack a little. And if you could tell us how you started sonography, how you started your journey and why you chose sonography. Yeah. So back a long time ago, uh, my mom was going through a very high risk pregnancy can you hear my dog whining in the background? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, my mom was going through a really high risk pregnancy and we would go to MFM and she would get scanned every single week. And so we got really close with the doctors there. I don't know if y'all have patients that come in weekly, but that's you know, y'all become friends and almost family at that point. And at one of her scans, the baby didn't have a heartbeat. And she lost the baby. And the stenographer there with us when we heard the news, and I was like five or six at the time. So this is like ingrained in my mind, but she was so caring and sweet and comforting through that. And I feel like she played such an instrumental role in 
my mom's healing process and her healing process and mine and like our whole family, um, just to have a healthcare worker that cared about us so deeply. Cause I feel like in healthcare, a lot of times, um, when you have exams every 15 minutes or when you have sonographers who don't really, you know, they're more in it for the money, you know, you don't really get that care, that deep care for your patients. So I was like, I want to be in the medical field. I want to do that. But like I said in our YouTube video, it's like a secret society. Like nobody really knows where sonographers come from. Like they're just kind of there. Like, where's the school for? Like, what do you have to do? I'm like a very rule follower type of person. Like I want my path laid out and I want to know where I'm going and what steps to take to get there. Ultrasound was just not like that. Like I didn't know anything about it. So I ran from the idea for a little bit and I was like, I'd rather be a nurse. Like everyone's a nurse, you know, like I know where nursing schools are and I know nurses or a teacher. I was like, I could be a teacher, like teaching is super common. Like, but I just had that calling on my life and I just couldn't get away from it. Um, and so I was like, okay, so one day I just Googled schools in my area and the college of healthcare professions popped up and I, uh, I reached out to them and they said, well, we have an open house tonight. And so if you want to come, you can come. And I went and I took their entrance exam that day. They're like, you can take it as many times. Like it's free, whatever. So I was like, okay, like, I guess. And so I took it and I like, it like got accepted, like without studying for this test. Like it was the really most craziest thing. I was like, what is happening in my life right now? And I just feel like it was all these signs of like, like saying this is where I was supposed to be, just reassurance um, that these doors were just wide open for me to, you know, walk down this path. And so I got accepted into school and then I started in 2019, January, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like so much longer than that. <laughs> but yeah, 2019. Your program is almost two years. Yeah, so our program is six semesters in two years. We get a week break for Christmas both years and a week break for summer, which usually lands around 4th of July. And so we'll go from January. It's kind of weird because I started in 2019 and then finished in 2020, but I started January 2019 and graduated December of 2020 so you know but um but yeah it was six semesters um in two years and my program we just did uh general vascular and OB-GYN so we never learned echo um that was like its own different program that's interesting um so hmm, I had a question and then I just forgot oh I remember it now. Uh, it seems like you stumbled upon this program and this school. Did you do any other research for other programs around your area? Or I did, anything? yeah. So that day that I was looking into schools, um, the cool thing about the College of Healthcare Professions is that it's an interview-based acceptance, whereas the other programs in my area like Parker or Weatherford or El Paso. We have a lot of programs in our area, actually, which is crazy. They're all accredited and really good programs. They all accept you based on your GPA. And I did not have a good GPA in high school. So I was like, that was another hesitation I had. Like, I just am not smart enough to do this. Like, I don't have a 4.0. Like, I really didn't do good in like standardized testing, all this stuff. But CHCP does interviews. And so whenever I went in there, we just interviewed to get into the program. And I got I got declined by Berker, which was really sad, but <laughs> I ended up at the school I really think I was supposed to be at. That's so good. I mean, your journey, I remember when I first heard it and then when we were talking about it, I was like, wow, this is so amazing. It <laughs> definitely was meant to be with everything that had gone you know, down in your process. And it's really cool to see how that played out. So do you have advice for students who are having a hard time getting into their programs? Yeah, I would say, so my story is, is different than the normal story. There's so many people, so many people that message me regularly and are like, you know, I'm applying for school. And then a couple of weeks later, they're like, oh, I got like, I got denied and all this stuff. And denial, unfortunately, for some people, that's part of their journey. 
And so just because a school doesn't accept you the semester you apply doesn't mean that it's not meant to be because every year there's a different pool of candidates. And while you might have not made it that year, the next year you might be the top candidate just based on how they're accepting people. Um, so I would say if this is something that you feel is a call in your life and you really feel passionate about, don't give up just based on not making it the first time or being like, well, Leah got in like on accident, basically, um, because that's really just, you know, not not the normal. Um, so, yeah, I would just say don't lose hope if this is something that you want to do, like keep at it, keep trying, don't give up and it'll all in the end, everything will all work out. And how was the program for you? Like, was it difficult or did you think that it was like doable? Um, so, yeah, I was blown away at how hard it was. Honestly, I don't want to scare anyone off. But going into it, like I said, I had no idea what ultrasound was. And I genuinely was that person going into school thinking it was just babies. Like, I really, like, genuinely didn't know anything else because I really hadn't really done much, much research. Um, and I so admire the people in my DMs that are like really researching, asking a ton of questions, like wanting to know what they're getting themselves into. Like, I wish I had done that. Um, and I didn't. And so, yeah, it was, it was hard. I was not expecting the workload to be what it was. Because like I said, we didn't have any breaks. Like if we failed a class, you get kicked out of the program. And there was just a lot of pressure, like, oh my gosh, like, oh, what did I get myself into? Like, this is crazy. Um, I didn't know that we did procedures in ultrasound. Um, that was, I learned that clinical one day where they were like telling me, they're like, we're going to do this liver biopsy or something. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, and I turned to walk away and they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, they're going to do it. Right. And they're like, no, you're, you're like, you're going to help. And I was like, like, no, thank you. <laughs> Are you serious? Like, absolutely, like, no, thank you on that one. But um, yeah, that's not a good attitude to have as a student. I would not recommend saying no, thank you in clinicals. I'm like out here giving bad advice. But um, no, it was really shocking though. So there's just so much I learned about ultrasound along the way. Like, I didn't know we looked at hertz. I didn't know we looked at vascular. Like, I was very like determined. I was like, I'm going to look like, I want to be an ob -GYN sonographer and y'all can do whatever you want to do. I'm just going to, this is what I'm going to do. And they're like, my teachers are like, Leah, you have to have like an open mind about things. Like you might end up in a hospital one day. And I was like, no, like, not for me. But yeah, I was, it was difficult. Um, I, I can totally relate to your experience and your story um, because I did my research for programs in my area, but I stumbled upon my school and then got accepted the day of my interview. So I'm just like, oh, I guess I'm going to this school. And I didn't like, like your program, my, my program, like if you don't pass a class, you um, get terminated. And so it's very good and comforting to know that other programs are very similar. Yeah. And it's scary. It's scary when you see like your best friend, like not make it. And you're like, like, oh my gosh, like, like they don't just say they'll turn like they're for real about it. Like if you don't pass, you get kicked out like for real, for real. Like it's not an empty threat. And that's also really scary. That <laughs> like, is oh scary. My gosh. It's like, yeah. It adds pressure. Like I need to do well or I'm not gonna be able to continue. And you said your best friend didn't make it. Yeah, there was, so we started off a class of 16 and we graduated a class of eight and our CVS program started off a class of 10 and ended up with a class of three. So it was like very scary. <laughs> the whole time. That is scary. Um, it, uh, my uh, friend, Christy, who was also on this podcast a couple episodes back, she is no longer with my cohort. So that's why I'm like I'm really sad because now it's just me. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard it when is. your friends like, and it like almost makes you feel guilty. Like, why did I make it and you didn't? Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. Yeah. It was like, and to me, I was like, what I could do more to help her, you know, so that we can do this program together. So it's, it's an experience. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. 
it's tough. It's very tough. So what I want to know is kind of like what, how BB imaging has been going for you. I saw that you went, they let you go to Austin. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, BB imaging is amazing. Um, when I was in school, I think I found them my first or second semester and it was like another thing where I just knew that I was going to end up working for them. And I was like, told everybody like, this is my future company. And they're like, Leah, like chill out, man. Like <laughs> you need to keep your mind open to things. Um, and so whenever I graduated and didn't end up working for them, I was like, Oh, like a little disappointed, but I also was happy with where I was at. And then, like I said, they reached out to me on Instagram and said that they had an office in Dallas. And the way they work is they find offices who don't have ultrasound like sonographers at either because they're far from kind of the metro area or the area is so oversaturated that all the sonographers are working in the hospital and not in these little tiny doctor's offices. And so they go and they contract through those offices. And so it's kind of contract work, but it's kind of not in a way. So they found an office and I was like just crying that whole day. And I was like, this is such an answer to prayer because I knew that my job I'm at wasn't like where I needed to be anymore, but I didn't know where I wanted to go. And here I am with BB Imaging, who's who I wanted to be with all along. And so I got hired with them and the contract with that office fell through they decided they didn't want to, I guess they wanted to find their own sonographer. I'm not sure what happened, but they just didn't want to work with us anymore. So then I was out my old job, which was a good thing, but also kind of sad. And I didn't have this new office with BB Imaging. So they were like, in the meantime, like you can work with us through our marketing and you can help run social media and all this stuff because your Instagram, like you have experience. And I was like, okay, but like, I don't have a degree in this. Like I'm not, I feel like I'm not good at it. Like I just throw stuff out there and if it gets liked, it gets liked. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And like, that's just the way it is. So it's a lot of pressure running something for someone else and they're paying you to do it. So they're expecting you to do well, but I don't know how to like make things, you know, you can't really make things do well on the internet. They either do or they don't. So I jumped in this whole new job of marketing and running Instagram and Facebook and helping like put together events and all this stuff, which is also so much fun, but so different than what I thought I would be doing. And so I've just been working with them. And I went back to my original job that I had before school at the preschool um, and have been teaching preschool while I've been waiting for them to find another office in the Dallas area. So yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. And I would not have seen myself here post-grad in a position where I'm not scanning and I'm back at the preschool, but I'm having so much fun with it um, and all the different opportunities. So yeah, anyway, I just went to Austin, all that to say, I did just go to Austin. Um, I went to Austin and uh, filmed some videos for some Instagram taker takeovers we're doing for um, uh, some colleges to try to promote our technical assistant program and then also filming some training videos for new um, technology that's being released this year. So awesome. it was I mean, a fun weekend, but yeah, that kind of goes to show though, look at all the stuff that you are doing now and it's, it's open different doors, different avenues. You're meeting more people, you're networking, you're going into the technology portion of it. You're doing other things that I think people would never think they could do or be able to experience. And all of that is just from you being able to reach out and someone reaching out to you. So I think that's great, no matter what you you think. Um, and you're doing a great job. I see their posts on Instagram. I didn't know that was you doing that. <laughs> that is me, yes. And for the most part, I run their like, messages too. Sometimes my, um, my boss will get on there because she likes to stay in the loop and see what everyone's doing in the ultrasound world too. But yeah, it's it is crazy because you have all these dreams post grad and kind of where you see yourself. And sometimes that's not where you end up, but where you are ends up being even better than what you had expected. Um, Cause now I get to work from home. I'm like 
so much more relaxed. My shoulder's not hurting anymore. Um, like it's just like a good time. Um, but I am really excited to get back in the field, hopefully within the next couple months. Oh yeah. I'm sure you'll get back into it, but that's the thing is, uh, I don't know how it, you, your shoulder probably would have been dead by now if you kept on doing that 15 minute scan every single day. Absolutely. It blew my mind whenever I went to Austin this weekend and I went to one of their MFM departments and I was like just asking some questions and I was like, how many patients do you see in a day? And this lady, she was like, we see in an eight hour day, we'll see seven or eight. And I was like, get out. Like, are you even serious right now? Because I was seeing like 24 a day in eight hours. Like, it was like a lot, it was a lot. And I was like, this is where I need to be. Like, this is worth waiting for. Um, because I would have ended my career way too soon if I had kept up at that other job, um, unfortunately. But luckily I got out. But yeah, finding a place that values their workers and values their sonographers is so, so important post-grad to know your worth and know that your longevity of your career is worth more than accepting the first job that's offered to you. That's amazing. I follow BB Imaging on Instagram and the, how do you call it? Like the, uh, it's not services, but I remember them giving free massages for their sonographers. The, it's just like amazing to see a company that supports their employee like that. And that's very rare nowadays. I know there are a lot of companies that are trying to do it, but for sonographers specifically, it's something admirable. So I'm really excited for what this company has in store for you. And I hope that you will be on the field soon. <laughs> Me too, sister. I, I love they just love their company and love their people so hard. Um, and I just really, really respect that because like you said, it's hard to find, to find people who do that. Like I got my birthday paid, like my, the whole day was paid. Um, and I was like, I'm not sure that I would have worked all eight hours that day. And they're like, it's okay. Like, we're just, we're going to pay for it. Like it's your birthday, half the day off. Like, I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> like thank y'all. Like it was just so they are just so caring. Yeah, it's a great company. I love that so much. That's a very important thing for people, I think, to look at when they're looking at their careers, especially um, like I wish I could. I wish that our field would uh, pay for like a massage a month. It's something so simple, but it, it, it says a lot about the company if they if they do that. And uh, it just shows that they really do care. And, and right now, this field already has a lot of burnout. And in general, a lot of people who are leaving unhappy, um, but there are a lot of people who are happy in this field. So we don't want future students to get, you know, the wrong idea. It's just, you gotta know that there are those good jobs out there that care. And then there are unfortunately those other ones that kind of take advantage of their sonographers. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I was talking this weekend too with, um, the CEO of the company about my experience in ultrasound before I got the job. And it almost, you almost have to have a bad job first to be able to see how good a good job is. Like if you get that great job right out of grad and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My, my dog is like freaking out right now. <laughs> um, but if you get that great job post grad's first job, then you can appreciate and you can be like, you know, this is really nice how they're treating me. But if you go from a situation where it's tough and it's hard and then you go into that, you see like how how truly good it really, really is. So I'm grateful for having a hard job to see how good my job now is and I can appreciate it even more, you know? Yeah, you kind of have to go through go through that and experience it. And sometimes a lot of the people who are in that that time where they're having a really hard company or a hard job like they they try to figure out how to get out of there and then you're more grateful for the job that you do get that does take care of you and you are happier for your um, being able to treat your patients a lot better I think in that kind of environment too mm -hmm. so very happy yeah. for you for for this great company for you to be with yes and me too they're amazing I'm so excited to see your updates and see what comes next 
what advice would you have for um, students who are will be graduating soon or new grads? Um, what do you have for to say to them to encourage them as they become new sonographers? Yeah, so to a new grad, I would say know what you want going into applying for jobs and have an idea of what you're passionate about because you want to accept a job that you love and you can leave every day feeling fulfilled and feeling like you made a difference um, because you worked so hard to get to where you're at. So you don't want to have a job that you don't love. Um, but at the same time, keep an open mind because you don't know where you're going to end up in a year or two years or three years. And so just because where you're at doesn't look like how you thought it would look like doesn't mean it's not where you're supposed to be. Um, and that's something I struggled with for a long time was like, I'm LP sonography. Like I have a sonography <laughs> Instagram account and I'm not actively doing sonography right now. Um, and that's hard. It's hard to have an idea of what you want in life and not have it be the reality. Um, but you just have to trust the process and you have to trust that everything comes together for a reason and works out. And so it's, but it's hard to find that balance of wanting, knowing what you want and then accepting, you know, different things. I don't know, man, it's, it's hard to find the balance. It really is. Postgrad is difficult in different ways than, than school is. But I think that's what I would say. It does that make any sense. Yes. That makes perfect sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Yes. Yes, thank, good. thank you, Leah, for sh sharing um, your experience with us. I know like as a student, we have this uh, set this, uh, set uh, expectation of what we want. So when we are done with the program, where we want to work and all the stuff. And your experience is unique because it shows us that it's not rainbows and su sunshines at the end of the program and that, you know, we live and we learn and everything just comes together in the end. Yes, for sure. Well, thank y'all for having me and um, talking this morning. I feel like I'm having coffee with like, you know, some girlfriends and we're just we're just sitting around talking. It's a lot of fun. I know. And that's what I love about this so much. I, I really appreciate everything that you do. I mean, like I said, I've seen you from the very beginning. I've always admired you and everything you've gone through. And for those of you who are listening, uh, you can find her on Instagram. So my Instagram is LP underscore sonography. And yeah, just give me a follow if you feel <laughs> like it. <laughs> Yes, you guys definitely um add her she does post a lot of things I've seen her post things about like even her day in the lives and like what she does and she's definitely an open book so go and uh, message her if you have any questions but thank you so much for being here thank y'all for having me as always you guys can follow us on Instagram I'm at DMS Diaries and Giselle is at I'll, I'll Giselle she's also on YouTube and uh, Facebook Yes, you guys. So definitely, you know, know we're here for you. And we hope that you guys took a lot out of Leah's uh, journey and experiences. And I know that a lot of we we all know all three of us know that you guys are going through it. You guys have the ups and downs. We're all going through the ups and downs. Let's just do it together. That's what this is for. So thank yes, you. And have fun. Yes, have fun while you're thank at you. it. <laughs> oh, before we go, can uh, you show us your dog? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry she was being so loud. She's That's she's still okay. a puppy. She's learned. she probably wants to be a part of this. I know. She's like jealous. She gets angry when she doesn't get attention. <laughs> oh my goodness. Her little ears. So ah, cute. Like, like part corgi, part lab. Part corgi? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's her name? Willow. Oh, Hi Willow. She's... He's so cute. Oh, you guys, if you're listening here. to this on the podcast, watch it on YouTube. You will see Willow. <laughs> Willow is so adorable. Oh I God. know. She's like the cutest. You just want to be part of it. That's all. Yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much. We appreciate you. And we can't wait to see everything that unfolds for you this year. Yes, thank you. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great Saturday. You too. Thank you. you and too. thank you everybody who's listening. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, like, and do all the things. 
we we love all right see you guys next time <laughs> bye bye